আপনি কথা বলবেন না আপনি শুধু আপনাকে আমি অনেক হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ মেসেজ পাঠিয়েছি দেখুন তাতে লেখা আছে ইউ জাস্ট ইউ নো ইন্টারেস্ট ইফ देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन एंड वी विल नॉट हैव अ लास्ट मिनिट क्वेश्चन आंसर যেমন যেমন হবে আপনি সবাইকে ইয়ে করে রাখুন হ্যাঁ 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 একদম মিউট মিউট করে রাখুন সবাইকে এবং জাস্ট টেল देम टू रेज हैंड যে রেজ हैंड করবে তাকে আপনি মিউট করে আনমিউট করে দাও নইলে কি হবে আমি So, madam, we'll uh, then unmute you and you can ask the question. We don't have a question answer session at the end. That's, uh, that's quite, uh, I think it's quite uh, pressing on the students. It's not needed. As you get the questions, please ask them. And at the end of the examination, there is an online examination, IMCRP, for which the codes have been shared. Uh, they have been sent to the CR groups and the CRs must have shared in the respective groups. Now we start with the lecture straight away. The general form of an nth order linear differential equ equation is look at it very carefully. There are coefficients a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2 up to a sub n. They are all functions of x. Some of them may be constants. Then with a sub zero, there is a derivative dn y dx n. Now somebody's mic is open and there is. Uh, no, yeah, he wanted to tell something actually. Ah, please, uh, please he has raised his hand. Uh, sir, I have a question. Whether we are able to give those online tests? Actually, the IMCRP is only allowed to give us... Now, don't uh, please interfere because we've taken care of this. Okay, okay, sir. Don't, uh, don't interfere like this. Let, let you go, go to the end of the test and then ask this question. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I know this and I've taken okay. care of this. Okay, sir. So, please uh, unmute uh, mute yourself. You are bothered about the test at the beginning of the lecture. It's very unfair. It's disturbing. Uh, 
uh, whoever uh, that is, I don't wish to know. So as I was saying, the coefficients are functions of x, because you can see that with every uh, a, there is an x attached, a0, 0x, a1, x. Some of them may be constants. And on the right-hand side, we have a function of x. The name of the function is capital X. In brackets, there is the small x, which is the independent variable. Small x is the independent variable. The dependent variable is y. OK. Now, a naught x is not identically equal to 0. This is necessary because had a naught x been 0, then the equation is not of the nth order. It is not of the nth order. Number two, none of the derivatives, no matter of what order, are raised to a power beyond one. That is why the title is higher order linear differential equations. So observe very carefully that the right hand side is not zero. Had the right hand side been zero, this equation would have been dubbed as a homogeneous equation. But because the right hand side is generally not going to be equal to zero, capital X uh, in bracket small x is a function of x not identically equal to zero. So this is in the parlance of these higher order linear differential equations in the language of this, the, 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 this is a non-homogeneous equation. Madam, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, I've uh, rolled the... Yes, yes, I can see it. If x okay. is 0, the equation reduces to the same, you know, we've just now... <laughs> Uh, cut out the dNy and dNx to y sub uh, y superscript n. You know, it is not a subscript. Y superscript n means dNy, dN, uh, dxn, and so on. And on the right hand side, there is zero. And this is called a homogeneous equation. So I think we understand in the context of such like equations the meanings of homogeneous and inhomogeneous. Am I clear so far? Please unmute them for a while. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We proceed further. Now, there is a theorem. You know, no theorem uh, needs a proof. These kind of theorems don't need a proof. The statement of the theorem is supposing there are for an nth order equation in different functions. They are termed y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3, and y sub n. And they are linearly independent. That means y2 is not a constant multiple of y1, or yn is not a constant multiple of any other or linear combination. So if I can write y3 is equal to c1, y2 plus c2, uh, c1, y1, and c2, y2, then y3 is not independent of y1 and y2. This you've learned in vector space also. But you don't have to have any knowledge of vector space. The independence part, in the dependent solutions, that is understood. So the theorem says that if there are n independent solutions, then a linear combination of them, as given by that line, y sub c is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus this, this particular line. I hope you can see the cursor rolling. Yeah. This is a linear combination of n independent solutions. So the theorem says that such a combination will also be 
a solution to the original equation with proper choice of constants. Constants are arbitrary. You can keep some of them zero as well. That will not make a difference. And that is the theorem. So if, if you come to second order differential equation, and if you say that y sub one and y sub two are two independent solutions. Example, y sub one can be cos x, y sub two can be sin x. Cos x is not always a multiple of sin x. They are absolutely independent of each other. Is that understood? Please respond. Yes, sir. Yes, so in sir. That, yeah, yeah. In that case, you know, your uh, solution will be y sub c is c1 y1 plus c2 y2. We will mostly, you know, confine ourselves to two solutions, y1, y2. And now, uh, recall once again that if you have uh, n solutions, y sub 1 through y sub n, then the number of independent arbitrary constants are also n. So this becomes the complementary function, the general solution actually. I think I've discussed in many classes that the general solution contains as many independent arbitrary constants as the order of the equation. So this is the general solution and it is in the parlance of differential equation you will see after one or two slides. We call this the complementary function. The complementary function has as many independent arbitrary constants as the order of the equation. Any other solution which does not have an arbitrary solution is called a particular integral or a particular solution. That need not have any arbitrary constants. So e to the power of 3x divided by 5 can be a particular solution to a differential equation. We'll see this, you know, when we are going through lecture the examples. So, uh, madam. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, next, sir. next slide, okay. please. Yeah, moved it already, sir. Okay. It's a theorem 2 now. Yes, yes, I can see. Theorem 2, let V be any solution of the nth order linear differential equation. Then we have uh, the equation is that, and U be another solution which is independent of B. Okay. So if U is the solution that we were discussing so far, that means the right-hand side was zero, uh, homogeneous part, and V is a solution which does not have any arbitrary constant, then the complete solution is U plus V. That means the complete solution has a function that is called the complementary part. Y sub C is here the complementary part. But I recommend that when you write down examination papers, you write Y sub capital C, capital F. So denoting complementary function. Plus Y sub P, denoting uh, particular solution. And remember again that the particular solution has two characteristics. Number one, it cannot be derived from the one that is the complementary function by assigning values to the constants. No, it has to be got by other methods and it is bereft. It is without any kind of arbitrary constant. It can have numeric constants like two or one third, but no arbitrary constants. Any any questions so far? Please uh, unmute them, madam. They can ask questions. Uh, it makes sense, you know. <coughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, they are allowed. Yeah. Uh, they the general, uh, the complementary function is obtained by making the right hand side equal to zero. Absolutely so. Absolutely so. It is actually the solution of the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. You're, you're right. You know, there are many ways of saying the same thing, but what you have said so now is absolutely right. There are two steps to solving this equation that appeared in the first line with the right-hand side non-zero. First step is to make it zero. 
and generate a complementary function. The second step is to find a particular integral, which is the focus of this lecture. You know, we will use the D operator method. There are many methods of finding particular solutions. Okay. But we will uh, just do as much as possible in the time available, including online classes. Okay, is the question answered, my dear friend? Has the question been answered to you satisfactorily? Madam, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. I can hear you. Okay, so this uh, boy you know, may have uh, just uh, gone out of the uh, Nishad, can, you only asked the question, right? So is it clear to you as sir is asking? Nishad, better samjhe ho. I think it's B73. B73. Uh, yeah, you Nishad. can unmute. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Uh, so, so much again, have I answered your question? Yes, sir, yes, sir, I have. You. Okay, okay. I was not getting any response, so I was worried whether you could hear me. Okay, let's carry on. So, next slide I'm going, sir. Okay. Have, I, have I spoken about everything? Complementary function? Yeah, this slide, I think you have spoken everything. Okay, general solution. Okay. Next one. Next slide. Um, Next one, yeah. Yes, this part y sub c is called the complementary function and the part y sub p is called the particular integral. Okay, cf and pi. Now, uh, read the next paragraph. There are neat methods, clean, nice methods of finding particular integrals. Two of them being the D operator method and the forceful method known as method of variation of parameters. Now, I do not know whether we'll get any time to discuss the variation of parameters, but uh, in an offline mode, maybe uh, something may be just talked about it. But we will certainly focus on the D operator method, and that is the purpose of this evening's class, the D operator method. Now, many of you know that capital D stands for, anybody can say, anybody can say what capital D stands for as an operator. The DYDX. The DDX. DDX. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, please Define mute them. Operator. Ma, please mute them. <clears throat> mute them. DDX or capital D is an operator, it is just DDX. It is like a doctor. If a doctor has a patient, it will carry out an operation on the patient. So if capital D is placed in front of Y, then it becomes DDX of Y. If it is kept in front of say Z, it is DZ DX. DDX of Z. Now, in uh, reality, physical problems have an independent variable that is not X. It is T, T for Tata, that stands for time. So, you know, for example, that we handle problems in physics in class 12. Uh, how a radioactive mass decays? What is the amount of mass that is left after T units of time? Uh, units of time after the first observation is made, say at 12 o'clock at noon, that is t is equal to zero. So it might stand for DDT. In real life problems, it is not DDX. It will generally be DDT. That means the derivative with respect to T. And again, we need a patient. So DDT is capital D. If you put Y, it becomes dy dt. This should be understood very well. D by itself is an operator. Similarly, D <clears throat> raised to the power of 2, which is you know loosely pronounced as D square, is actually, you should say it is D2. Although the 2 appears on top as a postscript. 
D2 means two de derivations. So if you put capital D2 in front of Y, it is D2Y DX2 or D2Y DT2. So if you now just read this slide, we are keeping it for a minute. If the equation, if the co coefficients A0, A1, A2, A sub N, they are constants, then the equation can be written as you know, shown uh, as five in the bottom. There is a function of D in brackets operating on Y, and that is resulting in capital X, which is a function of X. Now in this slide, the F bracket D denotes the expression just above it, A0, dn plus a1, dn minus 1, and so on, up to the last term, an, <clears throat> d, as if raised to the power of 0, giving uh, 1. Is this understood, the d, operator, the d way of writing the equation? I need a response here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. We'll carry on with the next slide. Next slide, please. Yes, sir. I've uh, transferred to the next slide. Question, huh? hmm. So can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. This is slide number eight. Fine. Cool. Now, first, let us talk about the complementary function, which is abbreviated to C dot F dot. C full stop, F full stop. So we consider the homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. And that is what I think was the end of the previous slide. And write a function of D applied on Y is equal to zero. Why is this homogeneous? Because the right-hand side is zero. The solution of this will yield the complementary function. Now, here is the main start of the uh, the problem, you know, we say that we seek solutions of the form y is equal to e to the power of mx. Can anybody say why? Please unmute them. Uh, yes, sir. they are allowed to talk. And Can anybody and say why? Why a solution of y is equal to e to the power of mx? Ah, bolo. Anybody? As it is a trivial solution. Or... No, no, no. I'm saying uh, y is a solution of the form y is equal to e to the power of mx being sought for this equation 7, right about 6 or 7. Okay. Sir, on, on differentiating, we will get m e to the power. Yes, that is the answer. Mx. The derivatives yeah. of exponentials are also exponentials of the same order. So any derivative of e to the power of mx will ultimately contain e to the power of mx. Second derivative will be m square e to the power of mx. Third derivative will be m cubed e to the power of mx. So ultimately, you see, that is the motivation of something uh, that is called, you know, in German, there is a word, and that's also used in English. It is an ansatz. You can write it down. A n S A T Z. Ansatz is a trial solution. I repeat the spelling, you can note it down. A N S A T Z. Okay, Ahmedabad, Nagpur, Sugar, Ahmedabad, Tata, Z for Zavia. Uh, Z is not for Zavia, Z. Now, see the next line. Since e to the power of mx is not 0, why do we say this? Can e to the power of mx be 0? No, sir. It's okay. an increasing function. Increasing. So it, it's always positive. It can never be 0. It never, you know, e to the power of mx for any m, if you plot the graph, it never goes down below the uh, x axis which would mean a negative. So is this next line clear after the, this previous slide? 
a sub 0 m to the power of n plus a sub 1 m to the power of n minus sir, 1. Sir, can you repeat y, y equals to e to the power mx part? Yeah, because every derivative, if you see the equation 7 above, uh, above fd, y is equal to 0, then you will see that there is a combination of derivatives of different orders equal to 0 because y is equal to 0 is not allowed. It will be a trivial solution. So the function of dy is equal to 0 with y not equal to 0 means the function of d can be 0. And the derivative of exponentials of any order have that same exponential order. So that is the motivation to the solution. You have to take a piece of paper, you know, this is not uh, Sherlock Holmes novel. You will have to practice. Okay, others who understand, understand. Others who don't understand have to take a piece of pen and paper and practice. What is the third derivative of e to the power of 3x? It is 27 e to the power of 3x, not e to the power of 4x. Is it clear? So yes. any order derivative of e to the power of mx will have certainly e to the power of mx. Nothing more, nothing less. So this equation is called the auxiliary equation. Do not be frightened by the terms, you know. It is a nth degree equation in a variable that we have called m. And how many roots will it yield? Anybody can uh, just uh, answer? Sir, n roots? n number of. Hmm. Absolutely right. N number of roots because it is an nth order equation. Very good. The coefficients are all constants. What is the name of this equation? It's called the auxiliary equation or some books say characteristic equation. And we will need to solve to get different values of M. Madam, next slide, please. Yes. Yes, sir. Done. <coughs> okay. Uh, here, I need to stop. Uh, students have no questions so far. We are on slide nine. Okay, good. Now, see, I've given a small note there. Note that according to the fundamental theorem, uh, let me agree with you. No, ah. no, it's back, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's back. According to the fundamental theorem of algebra, a polynomial equation of degree n has exactly n roots. Some of them may be repeated. So if you say that x minus 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 0 has only one root, 2, you are wrong. x minus 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 0 has four roots, namely... 2, 2, 2, 2. We say that 2 is a root of multiplicity 4. It is a repeated root, a repeated root 4 times. Now, when we have the characteristic equation having different roots, say m1, m2, m3, m4, and up to m sub n, because there are n roots, then the general solution is a combination of all those e to the power of m values and modified by constants. So c sub 1 e to the power of m1x, c sub 2 e to the power of m2x, plus you go all the way up to c sub n e to the power of m sub n. And madam is rolling the, you know, the cursor so that it is sitting exactly on where I am talking. So please. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's yeah, I, I can, yeah, that makes it simpler for them. Yeah. And the constants C sub 1, C sub 2, C sub 3, up to C sub n are arbitrary constants. C sub so, mm, Sometimes I'm stopping because I'm sipping some tea so that my voice does not dry out completely. Okay, please go to the next slide. Okay. So there is an example actually in the next slide on this case. Yeah. I think you go straight to the example. Yes. Yeah. 
because you know this uh, general discussion for some students uh, is no good they hate it in fact sometimes you know in the first study of certain things i go to the example straight away look at them and then come come back to the general discussion so the first example is very simple what have we done we have taken d2y dx2 minus 5 dy dx plus 6y is equal to 0 do you agree that the given equation can be written in d operator notation as d2 minus 5d plus 6 applied on y is equal to 0 yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. very good Looking at this D form of the equation, it is very easy to write down the auxiliary equation. Say D2 applied on e to the power of mx is m squared e to the power of mx. Am I right? Minus yes. 5 D on e to the power of mx is m e to the power of mx. And 6y will be 6 e to the power of mx. So we'll have an e to the power of mx common and this fellow equal to zero, but e to the power of mx can never be zero, as we just said. So the only alternative is that we must have m minus two into m minus three. This is the middle term factorization of that quadratic. That must be zero. And what are the two values of m? Two and three, right? So this is a case of two real distinct roots and the discriminant of that quadratic b square minus 4ac you will see is 1 b square is 25 4ac is 4 into 1 into 6 24 so the discriminant is greater than 0 leading to two real roots which are unequal and the required solution can you see is c1 e to the power of 2x plus c2 e to the power of 3x yes or no Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So I can move on to the next example or the next slide. Uh, sir, uh, just I would like to make one comment for the students. Yes, yes, yes. Please uh, do. May I? Uh, yeah. So students, actually, this is, <clears throat> as sir already pointed out, this you can take as a note for any problem that given a problem, you write the equation in the D mode. Like this has been written as D square minus 5D plus 6 you can blindly without any hesitation write your auxiliary equation simply by replacing d by m you should know all the theory behind that it is happening because we are taking the trial solution as y equal to mx and then we are taking e to the power mx not equal to zero as all the steps have been explained by sir but thing is that in the exam you are not writing those steps but blindly you can just replace your d by m to write your auxiliary equation or characteristic equation. So that will save you some time also. So this is just a thing to be remembered that the auxiliary equation or characteristic equation can be just obtained by replacing D by M. It's okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, good. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you for the comment. And students, yes. you know, this is a very, very helpful tip because yeah. you did not do all the working you know you write as follows the given equation is you know what is appearing on top in very bold letters then you start writing solution the equation in d form is this second line and from here we conclude that the auxiliary equation is replace each d by m and then do the factorization it's a very good and helpful tip. Thank you very yeah. much. And Madam, next yeah. slide, please. Yeah. So only take care in writing the D form correctly. There you should not go wrong. That you should write very cautiously. And then you can simply replace D by M. Uh, so we go to the next case. Is this yeah. the next one, case two? Second case is, you know, in which uh, the roots is, uh, are repeated. There are m roots occurring k times and evidently there will be n minus k roots of uh, which are distinct but uh, i will uh, you know 
request you to go to the next uh, slide because you know this may be a little heavy hmm. and it may not be necessary. We'll deal with second order equations or third order equations and not make it heavy for them. So if you go to the next slide, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, you just uh, explain with the example better. Ah, that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that is what I was thinking. Yeah. Yes, very good. Now, example two has a third order equation. It is linear because all the derivatives, uh, it is the first degree because the highest power is d3y dx3 and its power is 1. So look how we immediately write the given equation, may be written as d cubed, it's not d cubed, it's actually d3, minus 4d2, minus 3d, plus 18, bracket, all of them operating on y equal to 0. Okay. And the auxiliary equation is immediately written by replacing every d term by an m term. And that becomes uh, m cube minus 4m square minus 3m plus 18 is 0. And if you solve this, you will see that there are three roots out of which two of them are repeated equal to each other. Okay. So the solution, the general solution in this case is C1 plus C2x into the repeated root e to the power of 3x plus another constant attached to the e to the power of minus 2x term. I'm repeating again. In case there are three roots like this and one of them is repeated, the general solution is C1 plus C2x e to the power of repeated root x plus third constant attached to e to the power of the other root into x. Is this understood? I want an answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it has uh, repeated four times, then it could have it, it, C1 it, plus yeah. C2x plus C3x. Plus C3, C3, yes, right, yes absolutely. exactly. Absolutely, absolutely right. You know? right. That yeah. was in the slide earlier, which I skipped because it was getting too theoretical, but you are right, absolutely. C1 plus C2x plus C3x square attached to e to the power of repeated root x plus another constant C sub 4 with the part that is not the repeated one. Very good. Whoever has answered is perfectly all right. And everybody, I'm sure, is understanding. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. Sir? Yeah. Sir, can we write the repeating roots after the uh, minus 2 root? Because like a C1 e to the power minus x, yes, then yes, C, yes. C2. Absolutely. Absolutely. My dear friend, Shamram, you have to ask the J14 question. J14. J14. Yes, sir. If you have to give a child, if you have to give a child, what do you give a child? Addition is commutative. Yes, I mean, yes addi when you addition, have an addition, there should not be any problem. No, you add, write the table first. Addition is commutative. Huh? Mathematics is very good. So, what is the question? Money does not matter. If you are adding 4 to 9, it is the same thing as adding 9 to 4, the result is 13. Understood, Shambhram? Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, so, as per his question, as per uh, Shambhram, we can write this as say c1 e to the power minus 2x plus yeah. c2 plus c3x e to the power 3x. That is also perfectly okay. Is it okay, Shamro? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just, just keep in mind that the constant should be distinct. In terms, you can use a capital C or capital M, but Use one, two, three, four like that as suffixes. Otherwise, yeah. you'll be creating more problems <laughs> than is necessary. You already Actually, have. Because uh, this is a third order equation, we should always keep in mind that there will be three arbitrary constants. So C1, C2, C3 has to come in when it's a third order. If it's a fourth order, then C1, C2, C3, C4 have to come in. So just from the order of the equation, you already know how many arbitrary constants are going to be, right? I am not clear with the x part which is coming with the c2. Is it mandatory to give x with c2? 
yes that is mandatory in or because please see why it is mandatory your three uh, roots are minus 2 3 and 3 right if you do not have given the x what i will write c1 plus c2 e to the power 3x because both are same so it was as per the previous rule see what you would have written c1 e to the power 3x plus c2 e to the power 3x plus c3 e to the power minus 2x right but then what happens that c1 plus c2 adds up to only one constant right mm -hmm. so so therefore uh, it becomes total two constants and it does not remain a general solution mm -hmm. so, so for general solution for generating a linearly independent solution, if you have followed Sir's class from the beginning, there we have told that nth order equation means there will be n linearly independent solutions. So three linearly independent solutions actually are being generated using this x. One is e to the power three x. The next one is x e to the power three x, and the other one is already there e to the power minus two x. So that is why this x is absolutely necessary. And this is what our rule number two gives us for repeated rules. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. So can I go on? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Acha, madam, at this at this oh, point no. of time, yeah. Hey, Nijeda, the mother, kotha bolo na. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Ah, uh, yes. Anyone wants to tell anything to the class? Well, y is equal to c one plus c two s into e to the power three x plus c three x square. No, 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 no. no, no. no c3, if no, no, because this is separate. See, this is not a repeated root. In case oh, suppose oh, no, no, no. you had all the three roots were three only, in that case you would have c one plus c two x plus c3x square e to the power 3x. Only repeated roots generates those x, x square like this in order to get the linearly independent solution. But when it is not repeated root, that comes as usual. Is it okay? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If an equation contains four, four roots and three yes. are identical, then huh? c1 plus c2x plus c3x square will come yes absolutely oh, okay ma'am okay thank you ma'am yeah uh, say suppose you have a fourth order equation and as like here minus two is one of the roots and the other three are three only okay so in that case as you were telling i will write c1 plus c2x plus c3x square the whole thing multiplied with e to the power 3x. And now the fourth root will be minus 2. So that will be c4 e to the power minus 2x. Is it okay? Total yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. <coughs> uh, so any other doubt at this point? No, ma'am. Okay, fine. Uh, are you there? Yes, so I, I am very much there. I am just waiting and uh, listening to yeah. the discussion. Now, my suggestion was please uh, mm -hmm. take a screenshot at this point of time and share an attendance link. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, sir. Uh, screenshot I have taken. Uh, let me see if Rithik is not there. I will. Uh, I have to give attendance. I'll do it. So let me just the attendance link to share. Corona. Let them give the attendance because PKD sir has told me very specifically to, to uh, you know, track the attendance. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir, you can just continue with the next slide. I am looking into the attendance. Okay. Now, if the roots of the characteristic equation are complex, and I've written complex conjugate, that means if one of the roots is alpha plus i beta, where i is square root of minus one, the other one is alpha minus i beta now this is a property that we uh, you know in, in uh, mathematics in algebra we say that complex roots occur in conjugate pairs but that is applicable only when the entire equation has real coefficients if any of the coefficients are complex numbers then this will fail. 
but in quadratic equations with real coefficients, we have cases, two distinct real roots, one repeated real root, and the third is a pair of complex conjugate roots. That means if one of them is alpha plus i beta, the other is alpha minus i beta. Then the nature of the solution is y complementary function is e to the power of ax c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x. That means e to the power of real part x multiplied by c sub 1 cos of imaginary part x plus c2 sin imaginary part x. So if the roots are say 2 plus minus 3i, then e to the power of 2x, c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x. That is it. Is this understood? Yeah, can you repeat it once again? Yes, I can repeat 10 times. No problem. So look at the nature of the roots. Alpha plus I can, I can see that my cursor is going exactly where I want it to because I think I am the host also. Can you see this alpha plus minus i beta? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the real part is alpha. Imaginary part is i beta or beta? Hmm. Huh? Beta. Beta. Yeah, beta. 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 The imaginary part has to be mentioned without the i. Both the real part and the imaginary part are real. Anyway, so the solution is y complementary function is equal to e to the power of real part x, e to the power of alpha x. Can you see that? Multiplied by, there are two constants inside and we have cos beta x attached to c1 and sin beta x attached to c2. Is this clear? Now it should be clear. Is one Huh? Yeah, it looks like the Damovers theorem. Huh? But this one looks like that Damovers theorem of oh, no, Not at all. Not at all. Damovers so, theorem is something. Cos x plus i sin x to the power of n is cos n x plus minus i sin. That is a separate thing. It does not look like Damovers theorem at all. Uh, answer e to the power i x is equal to cos x plus uh, sin x. No, cos x plus i sin x e to the power of i x is cos x plus i sin x. The whole is theorem. Okay, sir. But why are you uh, bringing in all that? There is uh, such a lot so of... No, sir, sir uh, no, I wanted to know why this cos beta x and sin beta uh, x... Is yeah, Nirvan, I just the can explain... The proofs are not one. needed, but yeah, it will take time, you know. You have to believe a lot of things that we say because you are not doing an honors course in mathematics. In honors course, all the proofs are needed. You are doing engineering mathematics, you must know okay. the solutions and how to apply them. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, if sir, you still have doubts, you please, please meet me or me, meet Madam personally because if we carry yeah. on like this with you know other peripheral stuff, we'll never get to the end of this lecture. Uh, sir. We are, yeah. So this corresponding part is equal to zero. Can no. Why should it be zero? This is the complementary function. This e to the power of alpha x into, did you join late? Or did you join on time? Whoever asked this question. Okay, Shagni. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I joined on time, but. Can we join go to the class, eh, Baba? So time me kore so. Time me kore so. Later zero ho te This. Uh, sir, may I just interrupt for one or two minutes? Uh, sir, am I audible? Students, am I audible? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma yes, disconnected. So just in between, I want to tell uh, one or two things. Uh, like uh, what just now who was asking that? Uh, okay, one thing just as no, Nirvan yeah. asked. Uh, the thing is that what you were trying to connect that De Morris theorem, actually this representation is uh, coming from there. You are right in that. The thing happens is, see, I have two roots, alpha plus I beta and alpha minus I beta, right? I have two roots. Uh, just let me make use of my pointer. Uh, yes, uh, One moment. So what happens as for our previous discussion, I would write my solution as C1 e to the power, this alpha plus I beta X. Plus will be the multiplication. Yeah, this is my M1. Alpha plus I beta is my first root M1 and <laughs> alpha minus I beta is my second root M2. So this will be C2 e to the power alpha minus I beta X. Okay. And now actually, if you rearrange these terms, you can see I will not do everything, but as you were interested, I just wanted to tell you that this e to the power alpha x, you can see e to the power alpha x from it this term common. as well as e to the power alpha x, right? It comes common. That is why this e to the power alpha x is there. And along with this c1, what you are having e to the power i beta x, e to the power minus i beta x. So this again, yes, as you were really right, that's e to the power i beta x, you can write it. Yeah, upon of multiplication of and minus i. Okay, okay, okay. This Got also it. you can write in terms of cos and sine. So the constants will actually adjust and you will get new constants, but the final form is going to be in this, which is usually used. Okay. Is it clear now, dear one? How yes, is it coming? Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. It got, yeah. I got the point out here, ma'am. Yeah. So anyway, because we didn't want it to make the PPTs very heavy and that is not really, the proof is not required. We had not shown. If you're interested, it's good. Actually, we should know, understand what we are writing. We should really understand from where it is coming. So this is the history that how it is coming. But finally, when we will use in problems, we will use this form only, e to the power alpha x, c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x. Okay. Madam, I do just interrupt you. Okay, okay, okay. Niche. Okay, okay. 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 E to the power alpha plus iota beta into x and those second part it is actually the form of the equation c1 e to the power m1 x plus c2 e to the power m2 x yes 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 actually this is coming from the first rule only because alpha plus i beta is uh one root alpha minus i beta is one root so if i assume that this is my m1 and this is my m2 so I can write this as C1 e to the power M1 X plus C2 e to the power M2 X. But my M1 is alpha plus I beta. So if I take out the real part e to the power alpha, the imaginary part is e to the power I beta. But, and that again e to the power I beta, that gives that cos and sine part. So ultimately little bit one or two, three steps calculations are there. Finally, it adjusts. The constants will actually get adjusted. It will be this C1 and this C1 are not the same. The way C1, C2 I have here, and this C1, C2 will not be same. Some calculations are there. Finally, it comes into this, adjusting the constants. okay? <coughs> uh, so I think now it's better to go to the next uh, example. Uh, we cannot complete this lecture. Yes, so this is the eta, next eta, ora ek to kani dekhe na be kono asubide nahi. Bishon baabe, they see the students. We make the PPTs for hundred percent of the students, not for two percent. So there is a lot of theory behind all this. If we make a fifty slide PPT, you will run away from any online maths class. 
because it will be very heavy. You just run away. Then on a Pontius to be with the Kave, Ami Jabona Max class. She bathe on the Vatomaki class. So these things you can ask me, ask Madam in the corridor, come to my table, I'll explain. No problem. So let's pr proceed. Yes, sir, I've given the ah. next slide already. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see. Hmm. You understand that the roots are just uh, C. In D form, it is D3 minus D2 plus D minus 1 is equal to 0 with Y. And the auxiliary equation is just replace the D by M. And how do we solve it? We take first two terms, M minus 1 is common and M squared. And then the next term is just M minus 1. Akhir me, M minus 1 into M squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So what are the roots? One of the roots is 1. And the other is plus minus i. This means 0 plus minus i. So your alpha is 0. So what is the solution? Corresponding to m is equal to 1, we have c1 e to the power of 1x plus c2 cos how much? How much is beta? 1. c2 cos x, c3 sin 1x. Madam has written down plus minus i is 0 plus i and 0 minus i. So e to the power of 0x into that bracketed term. Is this understood? And uh, students, please notice that this equation has both real root and complex roots. That is why purposefully I choose those this example. That it's not that a root uh, equation no, it is, it is complex. <laughs> it is all well chosen. Yeah. So all the cases are covered. That's why I was saying in the beginning that it takes a tremendous amount of effort from the mind and the body to get the PPTs ready in whatever form you receive them. Madam, uh, next slide. Yeah, so in you a have slide. a real root one, and for that you have this C1 into the power X, and for this complex pair, this one comes in as alpha is zero and beta is one. So I hope everybody is okay with this example now. Now this is clear with all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now this complementary function part is over. And now we have to concentrate on finding the particular integral. Uh, so, sir, you can carry on. Hmm. Okay, next slide. Yes, I've gone to the next slide. This, this is now the beginning of the actual D operator methods. No, I'm not going to slide change only. Uh, students, can you see the next one? Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Uh, visible. Visible. Now it has come. Okay. Method for finding PIO. Eva Dekhon, we just have some uh, four minutes for class to end, yeah. or we can we can have another two three minutes. Mm -hmm. We have not been able to get into the heart of the lecture for today exactly we saw a little bit of question you know money a plus b is equal to b plus a you know i'm not going to give me to a kind of volume tell it just get to go on and and the examination will be available for opening uh mystic told me from 9 to 9 10 Ex exactly exactly and then you have uh, 10 minutes to finish it so madam can we carry on till 908 i think yeah, yeah, I think I, I can carry on, yes, up to nine, uh, eight, yeah, 10 minutes, I can carry on, they, ah. then they can give the test. Because. Okay, so students, still now you have, uh, see that we are looking into this non-homogeneous equation, but of course, linear equation, number four. We have read this equation many times, so I'm not reading it anymore, and in the D notation, D operator notation, we write it as FTY equal to X. I hope this part is okay with all, right? And if you have attended from the beginning, you have seen that the complete solution to this equation is written in two parts. That was YC, the complementary function, plus YP, the particular integral. So any Y, 
solution of this equation is actually cannot be calculated directly. It is calculated in two parts, yc plus yp. What is yc? Complementary function. That means you are making the right hand side zero, making the equation homogeneous and finding the solution of the homogeneous equation. And that is what we had been discussing till now, where three cases can arise and we have seen it clearly. So now what is left for us to understand that how to calculate the YP part or the particular integral. So this is what we will be focusing now. And there are actually many methods, a number of methods available for finding this particular integral. So what we will be learning is a very important method, D operator method again, because we will see that the D operator will play an important role. Okay, so now see that in order to find the PI of this equation, we understand that <coughs> what, what can be a solution to this equation, a particular integral. So it's a function. It will be first of all, a function of X, a function Y equal to Y X that satisfies this equation, whether we think it in the form of four or in the form of five, whatever may be, but particular integral of this equation will definitely be in the form, a uh, function rather, will be a function which satisfies this equation. And now see this, <coughs> so basically we are seeking for, we are looking for y. And symbolically, this equation from this equation five, we can write this y as one by fd of x. If fdy is x, then symbolically we can write y as one by fd of x. So what is one by fd? One by fd is actually, it's a symbolic operator. It's not that I'm dividing fd, I'm just one divided by fd. Definitely it's not one divided by fd. It is a symbolic operator, but what does it represent? <coughs> it is an inverse operator to fd. Whatever fd is doing, we are doing an inverse operation. Okay, now what this one by FD <coughs> or rather what is FD? FD we know it's a polynomial in D of degree N as we can see already. FD is a polynomial. So it is supposed to have basically N linear factors. This is a polynomial of degree N in D. So it will ultimately have N linear factors. So we will now see one important result before we go for finding that y, the ways to find out y, where we can have any function of d. But we will see an important result now that 1 by d minus a of x. Now see, what will what is your x? x is nothing but the right hand side. So <laughs> as if we have this 1 by d minus a operating on x, where x is any function of x. And what does this result tells us? It tells us that 1 by d minus a of x. Now, mind it once again, 1 by d minus a is just an operator. It's operating on the function x. We have just told that FD and 1 by FD are inverse operators, but exactly what we don't know yet. But here you can see actually it is related to integration or it is an integral operator. And the formula comes as e to the power AX integral e to the power minus AX x dx. Now this is a formula which should be memorized, <coughs> but definitely you should ask that how it is coming. So we have a proof also. Now I will not go into all the details of the proof, but just to give an idea that how, yes, such a result, how it is coming. So what we are investigating is one by d, mi d minus a of x. Now see, suppose, let us assume that one by d minus a of x is some y. One by d minus a is an operator operating on a function of x where d, of course, we know is d dx. And let us suppose that that is equal to some y. 
make again a function of x. So see that <coughs> this one, what does it give us? It gives us d minus a of y. If I just use the laws of algebra and just invert it, we see that what I will get d minus a will operate on y. And the other side, I will have x. I hope you can see that d minus y of t minus a operating on y gives you x. But knowing that your d is d dx, see what this actually gives us. What does this actually gives us? dy means dy dx minus ay equal to x. So actually, if I assume 1 by d minus a of x is equal to y, this actually gives us this equation dy dx minus ay equal to x. And what is this? Do we know this? I hope everybody can recognize this is some known equation. No equation. Yes, it's a first order linear equation. We all know. So being a first order linear equation, <coughs> again, we all can solve it. We know that we have to write an integrating factor. And what will be the integrating factor? This here, this is minus a. This p is minus a. So the integrating factor is e to the power minus a x. So we know how to solve. I will not go, I will not explain further steps because the proof will not be coming to your exam. But we should remember the result, understand, of course, how it comes. So we know linear equation to solve. We get the integrating factor. We will multiply both sides by the integrating factor. And we then we will be able to solve. And please see that once we will be able to solve this, we will get that y as this one e to the power x integral e to the power minus x x. <coughs> so this result we have to remember. And two important things now we have to remember that actually this 1 by t minus a, this operator is actually an integral operator. We now understand when I wrote usually initially symbolically 1 by ft, we didn't know actually what is 1 by ft. We just told that 1 by ft is an inverse operator to ft. And really, it's the inverse operator because ft involves differentiation, d powers, so differentiation. And when I'm putting it into 1 by ft, it is actually relating us to an integral operator. And 1 by d minus a of x is e to the power ax, integral e to the power minus ax, x dx. And another interesting thing we should note that really what I'm telling that 1 by ft relates to integration because if you see, <coughs> if we put here a equal to 0, a can be any number, right? Now, if we take the special case, a equal to 0, a equal to 0 means it's 1 by dx, 1 by d operating on x, a equal to 0. Notice that then this is gone e to the power x. It has become 1. e to the power minus x has also become 1. So what we have got actually? We have got this result that 1 by d of x is integral x dx. So this actually confirms that 1 by d is really the integral operator. So 1 by d is actually equivalent to this operation of integration. Like d is the differential operator, and 1 by d is really the inverse operator, is the integral operator. And we all know that integration is the reverse process of differentiation. So these are the two important results to be remembered when we are now going for this particular integral. Is it okay at this point? <coughs> so, madam, yes, we'll ma'am. Stop, stop, stop the lecture now. Uh, Mithik, yeah. are you there? Mithik? Mithik, are you there? Chole gache. Attendance link to Arakbar share kore the man before they go for the exam. Because students are leaving. Tick gache. Can you hear me? Can you share the attendance link once more? Uh, sir, uh, one minute. I'm just talking to Mrithik. Just a minute. I'm responding to you. Now, so many exam and Dr. All of you get into the IMCRP and write the exam.
Sir, we don't have our IMCRP course for section I. That is your problem. I can't help sir, you. Sir, sorry, sir. I am unable to uh, log in in IMCRP. I am being logged out currently. No, no. Whoever sir, has actually, whoever has difficulties sir, actually, cannot write. IMCRP works only inside the college. You cannot access. No, no. I, I have. I have requested Saurav sir to do the needful. I do not know what he has done. Sir, it says the location must be on, but I have already on the location. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just, same just problem, sir. Show me, yes, sir. Yes, that, that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just wait. Yes, wait, 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 wait. Just wait. Uh, yes, sir. I have uh, given the attendance link once more. So, students, you are please requested to fill up the attendance link. And the IMCRP test, I hope it will work. Just uh, wait. Okay, I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. I cannot open. I am announcing in the class. Saurabh sir says he has done it. Uh, sir, Breathtik is telling there is some problem perhaps in his end. He is just re redoing it five minutes he needs. <coughs> Okay. Uh, so maybe I just go with one example by that time rectifies that. As a student, I just spoke to Saurav sir once again and he says it is open and I have asked him to keep it open for a little while more. So that he has done. From his side he has done and he says he has texted me. But during the meeting I have not seen any text. I don't see the text during the meeting. Uh, Shantan, you want to uh, tell anything? Uh, just let me... Yeah, Shantan, you can unmute yourself. Ma'am, for section IJK, it was said that you would be sharing the codes in Google Classroom. We have okay. not given you. Okay, yes. codes I, I'm giving. I, I, I will give it here itself. Uh, don't worry. But now there is some problem with the Google What code. you It is being uh, rectified. IJK, I will just share. Once it uh, uh, no. starts working, I will share the uh, codes. Yeah, Wendrila, you can tell uh, put your question. Uh, I'm asking you to stay back. I'm just asking you to stay back. As a student, stay back. Sort of, sir, as Paul, he's redoing the entire thing. Stay back. Take us. I'm going to ask you. 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 Take us, students, wait. Uh, sir is again redoing the entire opening of the link. You'll not have a problem. Wait and write the examination. Take a job, show it to the board. Okay, if you have any question about the class, please ask now. Other, uh, we will look into the, maybe another five. No, no, he is being looked into. Saurabh is looking yeah. in. Write the examination because this is going to be very important. PKD sir has uh, wanted the attendance. He told yeah, me maybe around uh, 920, hopefully it should work. Ah, 9 points of the policy could last 925. In the attendance link, the Jara only examination they were, we will have to mitigate cast the bar away. Around the exam, the Asian Kara class could have an attendance link to the Asian. Sir, maybe then I can uh, do the example what I just explained with the D operator method. Uh, let me. Uh, 
इंटीग्रल सैन दवर minus x x dx so now here you have a very small question now maybe you don't expect this kind of questions in the exam except for two marks that just evaluate 1 by d minus 2 e to the power 3x so if if i have to uh, use this formula can be does it fit to the form so what does it tells us the form the is this one so that means your a is 2 in this question d minus 2 so a is 2 and the function ax on which it is operating that is e to the power 3x so therefore we can do this for a equal to 2 and x equal to e to the power 3x so if i apply this formula <coughs> here is your formula so e to the power ax that means e to the power 2x integral e to the power minus 2x and your x function is e to the power 3x dx so you see it works very nicely we can do the integration because it has become now e to the power x e to the power x again you integrate you get e to the power x so finally your answer is going to be e to the power 3x so therefore 1 by t minus 2 e to the power 3x this is going to be e to the power राइट and there you lose all your marks that you earn in the previous steps if you give that c in the answer god will help you in the end theek hai madam yeah Sorry. because we are talking about particular integral now please see that no arbitrary constant should crop in you should remember obviously that particular integral is devoid of any arbitrary constant so no c part is definitely come and uh, here there is a note that you can do your check that d my if you do the other way round basically d minus 2 of e to the power 3 it's actually the opposite action has been done now that d minus 2 e to the power 3x you can easily check i will not explain this this will come as again e to the power 3x okay <coughs> so this is one example there is another example 1 by 1 by d minus 1 x e to the power x that means your capital x function is this one x e to the power x and obviously you can easily see that your a is 1 in this case so once again if you apply the same formula it is giving you e to the power x integral e to the power minus x and in place of the capital x you have x e to the power x uh, so this is also a nice function actually because you have here e to the power minus x and this e to the power Abolo. x is gone so this becomes integral so x is x squared by so the is calling and asking me to uh, confirm whether you can get in some of you please confirm uh, sir actually i think i have to talk with mrithik first some of you please confirm that you can get in i am crp <laughs> <laughs> हां लोकेशन प्रॉब्लम इज शोइंग सर हां हां सेम प्रॉब्लम द सेम प्रॉब्लम इज हियर सेम प्रॉब्लम इज देयर अच्छा सेम प्रॉब्लम सो रहा वोरा बोलते सेम प्रॉब्लम इज देयर এখন এখন আছে এখন আছে আমরা ক্যারি অন করি ম্যাডাম আপনি ক্যারি অন করুন হ্যাঁ কিছু শব্দ আপনি ম্যাডাম হ্যালো मैम আরো করুন সরব সে 30 শব্দই রেখেছে কাজে 25 শব্দই নিতে পারেন হ্যালো ম্যাম রিফ্রেশ এন্ড রিলগ 
students refresh and re relog. That is what sort of sir is telling. So the same, yeah, uh, the same course. link. Okay, students, just wait a moment. New link is being given in the chat. Uh, just follow the new link. Use the new link. Okay. Just wait. It is being given. Because sort of, I'm try to 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 and if we can directly get the link for the Google form which has all the questions, so we can give the exam in that way. Uh, yeah, that is also uh, true. We are just trying, just one moment. Let me see if the code works. No, madam, I'm not. Shombar connector from any of the example. Children, Thorops are a kind of try coach and only not a series of the rats. What the thou? Sir, the go action follow the page. So, can I was somebody confirm that you've been able to get in? Anybody can say Barbara location on good the bullshit. Location on good the bullshit. A location on the location is problem. What's the location of the dog? Location is giving an error, sir. Like, I think that because uh, it's students just can you try once if it is working um, uh, my location is on, but still uh, the like site is telling that uh, your location is not on. Uh, you must put your location on. Okay, okay. It's better than uh, the uh, the 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 section the code. Code. Yes, <laughs> Amija, the word, chief, please follow my advice. I'm a yeah. senior person. Carry on with this thing. I'm a test of poor in you. Can wait any mother? Uh, yes, yes. Attendance is not a Yes, test we will uh, conduct sometime on Monday. Uh, and, carry on, carry on, another five, yeah. ten minutes. Carry on, please that listen to me. Minutes. I'm a very senior person. I'm so much more more bougie. Okay, so there is one more example like this. Uh, so first of all, students, the example one and two, they were all okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, uh, now yes, see, now example three, you see it is... 1 by d square minus 3d plus 2. So it's not a linear factor. Now you have a quadratic one. But yes, you can understand that, of course, I can factorize and try to do something. <coughs> As it is shown in this slide, but I will not go into all the details of this. The reason is that because this is not a linear factor, quadratic factor. <laughs> I have See, to do listen to what I'm saying. To which head of all of the announce for the teacher of the college in Yano for it. I have to do some of these class for Jora. I cannot directly use this form. So now there are actually some shortened rules. There are some shortened rules, and that is what we will class. Uh, Madam, class there are, there are some shortened rules. Please see. That for any one by now, see the rule what I learned, what we learned just now, that was for one by d minus a of x. That was what we learned. But now we will learn some ready made shortened rules <coughs> for one by a d of x. So directly I can have here any function of d. So that is going to be the advantage of this shortened rule. Please see. We learned the rule for 1 by d minus a of x with the integral formula. But that was for only a linear factor. If I have a quadratic or any other, we have to do some extra work. So now we will learn some shortened rules which will give us direct formula for 1 by fd of x. But it's not one. We will learn a number of formula, a number of cases where x will be different kind of functions, okay? So the case one, 
case one, you see that your x is just an exponential function. This is the easiest one, case one, that the function on which your <coughs> that inverse d operator is working, that is e to the power x, an exponential function. What does the rule tell you? It's a very, very easy rule to use. Very, very easy, I should say, because 1 by fd of e to the power x is, what is that you see? Numerator is e to the power x, the same function. Denominator, fa. That means whatever fd you have, that d has been just replaced by a. So the rule is very, very easy. 1 by fd of e to the power x. So the function on which you are operating if it is an exponential function, your answer will be just. So that means, you see, if you remember this formally, <coughs> you can avoid all those integration. Just direct use of formula and it tells e to the power ax by a f. But of course, there is a but in it. I can write this only when this denominator is not zero. So this rule will work, obviously, only when a f is not zero. So this is a very easy rule, but yes, it works if f a is not zero. But if f a is zero, what will you do? Yes, we have another rule. In case f a is zero, then the rule is modified. Then you have an extra x. So is x e to the power a, a, and the denominator is f dash a. In case of f a, now we have <coughs> If dash a means that Madam uh, Shorov has uh, kept it open for another 10 minutes, whoever can okay. write, write the examination. Otherwise, we'll arrange on Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Okay, sir. Just with this rule, I'm just, uh, just one or two minutes. Ah, I just one or two minutes. Okay, sir. 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 Okay, from no 10 problem. minutes from now, I can cool be the location to manage for the Okay. Shoda was done from his part. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so not, a, not a totally should be okay. Not, up to 940. <coughs> not beyond that. So, in case a fa is zero, the rule is modified like this ax e to the power ax by f dash a. What does this f dash a mean? That means you are differentiating this fd. You are differentiating. So f dash d you can calculate. If you know f d, you can calculate f dash d. And then d is replaced by a. Okay. But now f dash a can also be 0. If that is 0, but the double derivative is not 0, then you have x square and the denominator is f double dash. So it continues like this. <coughs> if the denominator is 0, then you have one x power added and the denominator again you have one derivative added but all written at d equal to so this is the case number one let me show you some example then only it is going to be clear madam i am leaving uh, okay sir no problem i'll just uh, uh, stop with it uh, 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 Mam, ekhane section J code ta kotha hai. Mane J obdi to royeche. I J K to code nahi. Acha, oye code ma. No, I J K to code ta nahi ma. Sono sono. Acha, amak ek to bolte thebe. Sono. Please uh, listen to me. If you are finding problem, don't worry. We'll take this test on Monday or Tuesday. So just don't worry. We will check. Jara class se chilo, tadhe kare chulbe. Allah onno the test will not be validated. I can already student to Cholega, I show to all this. I can show me so Okay, I have just uh, given the code for J and uh, sorry, I JK will be last digit two and three. Same only last digit two and three. So you can try if it is working now. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it started to work right. It is working, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am, it is okay. working right now. Okay, then, then I you should, I should the tail show of it is working. I'm just okay. hoping that. Okay. okay, so then please give and the test. All of you can write. I tell Saurabh that it is working. So all of you confirm it's working. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is working. Uh, Arakba, because I have taken the mic off my head. Working, so? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Working. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Working. Good, good, good. Thank you. Ah, uh, Sorab. Sorab, okay, it is working. Cholche. Uh, sir. चाची Ma'am, there are no questions in the exam. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Uh, students, you will find the questions in the link, Google form link given in the chat box. Uh, Ma'am, when will we get the PDF of this? PDF page, uh, I will share. I will share. Today will be shared. Don't worry about sharing PDF. We will share it. And we will continue with this uh, top uh, many PI. Basically, we have to talk. This is just the beginning of this D operator method. There are five, six cases, as I told you. So we will not continue any further today. Just Madam, up to this, I have done in IJK and your section F. Okay, 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 okay. I have done up to this part. All IJK section students will confirm and section F students also. Section F students have done something very bad. Tina Madam took, took the next class. I asked her to get an input. We had some doubts. We asked her and doubts got cleared. I the section F. I Monday. You know, they do not know to speak the truth. Half truth is very bad. Jodi bolto class hoye chhe kichu bujhi ne sir is a bad teacher. I am bolta mujhe tika je bhai. I am a bad teacher. Or a bolte chhe Tina ke je ha ha sir question. Amra kichu doubt jigesh kore chhi sir doubt clear kore party chulega chhe. Ami apna songe section F. Jao ha. <laughs> Take me to your section F class. I hate this half truth thing. Half truth is very bad. 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 Half truth is very Half truth is very bad. 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 Half truth is very to all the students, bye bye. Good night. Uh, so, students, have you got the questions in this link now? Ma'am, still there are no questions. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, we have got the yes, link. Got no chat box is in link. Google form link touch. You will get the questions there. Not in yes, the answer. Yeah. So you can just complete that, and we will call off for day. It's already quite late. <coughs> so anyway, we will complete the D operator hopefully in the uh, offline class only.
So what we did today, is it okay with all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so if you don't have any further questions, I hope everybody has got the link. One thing. Huh? One, can I ask something? Yes, sure, sure, sure. Uh, suppose we have uh, an expression where the inverse be operated is the form of one, mm -hmm. one over, uh, suppose one over d times d minus d, operating mm -hmm. over, over some function of x. Yeah. But now, Suppose I can factorize it in the form of partial fractions, mm -hmm. and then I am operating it over that function. Yes. Uh, that is one way I can approach. The second Absolutely. way I can do it, I first evaluate 1 by d minus 3 over mm -hmm. that function. Then I get a result, and I operate 1 by d yes, again yes. over that. Yes, but yes. There was one question in B.S. Gravel. I tried to solve it, but both the two steps were the two methods were giving me different results. Uh, see, uh, that for that, I should say, please uh, come to me on Monday during lunch break or after four. Uh, that, I mean, you just tell me the exact question. I will definitely look into it. Ma'am, are, are particular integrals unique? Yes, absolutely. Unique. unique. Uh, whether you use, uh, as you told the two ways, if you're using, doing like that, or even, as you will see, that we have this shortcut formulas. You use the shortcut formulas, your answer should be same. Definitely unique. Okay. So maybe somewhere in the process you have got or whatever. So please come to me with the specific problem. I will definitely look into it where it is going wrong. Okay. Ma'am. <clears throat> yes. Ma'am. Ma'am, yes. in, in the question paper, ma'am, there is a question. 1 by d minus 2 whole square e to the power 2x. Uh -huh. uh, so there, ma'am, option 1 and option 2 are same, and ma'am, the correct option is missing. Then you leave. I don't know that. Uh, I'm like 1 by 2 will be there in one option. Okay, yes, ma'am. Half x square e to the power Yes, ma'am. Second Same option plan. is uh, showing wrong, but it is actually the same as the first option. Please trying to uh, say maybe the options. I mean, uh, anyway, there's something problem with the Google form today. Um, I think has done some problem. I mean, something has happened. Anyway, the answer I can tell you. See, uh, not that. I mean, that is just for a formality. Uh, what will be the answer for that? Can anyone tell me that question? X square e to the power two x by two half of right. half yes, yes ma'am. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. But uh, option is missing. Yeah, okay. I understood that is some uh, technical problem. But if you have understood and given the right answer, that is the net gain of our class. For us also as teachers and for you also as students, you have given the right answer. That's uh, okay. Okay. Madam, what is the data volume? Pay away. Okay, any other question, anyone? Otherwise, I'll just close the meeting. Can we treat D as an algebraic quantity? D as if? An algebraic, um, D as an algebraic quantity, like? Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Um, it has actually dual characters. It has some more properties. But yes, we are uh, treating it as algebraic uh, a variable only when we are thinking of it as a writing it as a fd as a function of d we are taking it as algebraic variable only but it has more something more properties than algebraic variable uh, but we are treating it as algebraic variable. Okay, then I'm leaving the meet. Thank you, students, for uh, being here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so late. So I'm just closing the meet. If there is thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much.